just so everybody knows. And um, so welcome everyone to welcome from Warren, Rhode Island. It's a beautiful day here, bright and sunny. I know some of you are in the evening hours. So um, thank you for coming to see our artist speak with Pamela today. Um, I wanna mention that uh, Imago Foundation for the Arts Artist Speak series started in 2018. And it's with the goal of bringing expert artists practice stories of their lives to the public to create awareness and also as a way to inspire and let other artists think about their creative path. Today we have um, Pamela uh, who study calligraphy and stone cutting of all things with Edward M. Kaddish at Colorado College in the mid 70s. Um, Pamela taught calligraphy to inmates at the State Reform School for Juveniles in Connecticut, um, Connecticut in US. And then uh, she went on to study with calligraphy, uh, study calligraphy with calligrapher and font designer, Arthur Baker in New York and in New Haven. She studied intaglio printmaking with painter and printmaker uh, Guido Strazza. Is that correct, Pamela? Guido. Guido Strazza. Guido, Guido Strazza. It's my mistake. Pamela has expertise in topography and graphic design, as well as print production and color some, uh, supervision for museum and gallery art photography books. She was global director of catalog production at Philips de Pure and Luxembourg Art Auction House in New York from 2001 through 2004. She's conducted video oral histories with artists, excerpts of which have been published in art exhibition catalogs. Pamela is the archivist for the artist, independent curator and publisher Willoughby Sharp who organized the 1971 Pier 18 exhibition at the abandoned pier on the Hudson River. Pamela, uh, Pamela placed Sharp's archive at the Getty Research Institute in uh, LA in 2016. Pamela Seymour Smith Sharp is originally from Houston, Texas. She invents hand styles that employ stroke sequences and directions of the brush, writ uh, brush written Imperial Latin alphabet, Roman capitals. And Pamela currently lives in Bristol, Rhode Island, where she moved uh, or came to in 2018 from Greenpoint, Brooklyn, after living and working in New York for 30 years. We are very, excited and proud to have uh, Pamela with us today as um, part of our Artist Speak. Um, and Pamela, um, what I will do people, just uh, so you know, if you can keep yourself muted, you could put questions in the chat and then we can present those to Pamela as we move along at the end. Go ahead, Pamela, thank you. So, do I have to hit anything, Mary? I'm sorry. Am I am I on screen? Oop. We can see you, and okay. you don't have to hit anything until you want to have your PowerPoint come up. All right. Okay. Very good. As you can see, this is my first Zoom presentation. Hi, everybody. Thank you for tuning in on such a nice day here in Rhode Island. Thank you, Imago Artist Foundation and Mary Dondero, for inviting me to speak about my work. In 2018, I opened an Instagram account and immediately I had worldwide access to the work of traditional Western calligraphers and graffiti writers. Having been interested in traditional calligraphy and graffiti writing since the 1970s, I could see that there was still almost no contact between the two areas of writing practice. I decided to remedy that by attempting to cross Roman capital with graffiti writing. Relying on the stroke sequences and directions I learned from Father Kaddish in the 1970s, now embedded in muscle memory, 
In 2019, I began writing Roman capitals with a wide graffiti marker. I chose the alphabet as my subject. Soon, a hybrid writing style emerged that I call Roman Cap's hand style. In the process, I came up against my own edge of correct and not correct writing. I had to give myself permission to break ingrained rules and proceed. Both Western calligraphy and graffiti writing have rules that can either be conformed to or broken. I began to write rules-free alphabets and came in touch with closed areas of my own mind as I allowed Roman Cap's hand style to invent itself. I worked at night and left pieces to dry overnight, often going to bed feeling that I just made a mess. Looking at my work in the morning, I sometimes felt the same, but decided to trust the integrity of my muscle memory and not throw, not throw away what felt weird and what my eyes didn't like, a decision that all artists confront. Today, I'm gonna to show some of what led up to Roman Cap's hand style in my personal art making trajectory over the last 50 years. I studied with two Western master calligraphers whose writing approaches to Roman capitals significantly diverged, the well-known Father Edward M. Kadich, and the much less well-known, but equally important to me, calligrapher and font designer, Arthur Baker. In the 1990s, I studied in Italian printmaking with Italian maestro Guido Strazza, an artist who personally knew futurist artist F.T. Marinetti. Guido will be 100 years old in December of this year. Willoughby Sharp, who chased the art impulse wherever it led and demanded that artists regularly answer the question, what are you doing, is present here in spirit. Recently, weekly conversations with writer and Italian language teacher Andrea Sartori in Milan via Zoom have begun a philosophical discussion of my work. Through Andrea, I heard about Italian graffiti scholar Vittorio Parisi, who called for papers for a panel on graffiti culture this year, in light of the ideas of cultural theorist Mark Fisher about encounters with the weird and the unhomely. Crossing Roman capitals with graffiti writing is the active site where I experience the weird and the unhomely, essentially the other. So now we're going to go to the slideshow. Oh, good, it worked. <laughs> um, so beginning, the, the first section of this slideshow is the cover the years from 70 to 78. These were high school and college years. This period was one of broad exposure to traditional calligraphy practice and the first glimpses of early graffiti writing in New York. My family moved from Connecticut to Colorado in 1971. I taught myself black letter calligraphy with a speedball pen set and an instruction book in the 10th grade. My first calligraphy class with Father Kaddish was in my freshman year at Colorado College in January 1975. I was 18 years old. The second class in calligraphy and stone cutting was in January 1976. Yeah, people, oh, you the water, yeah. In 1976, 77, I had a junior year abroad in Cambridge. Oh, really we have to, oh hold on a minute, hold on, hold on. Um, we have to get somebody to mute, please. And Pamela, I think you need to, are Unmute. you, okay, thank you. Sorry. Okay. No, that's not. Okay, next slide here. These two pieces uh, span the beginning and up to the current uh, work that I'm doing now. On the left, we have an early calligraphy piece circa, it, it's, it's dated 1973 uh, with the black letter calligraphy that I taught myself in high school. So this is pre-Father Kaddish. Uh, and on the right, we have a piece from the Roman Caps derangement uh, series, which uh, is a COVID-19 hand style that I developed uh, last year, 2020. 
So we're basically going to see how the progression from the early to the current work. Um, this is what a practice sheet looks like if you're trying to teach yourself black letter calligraphy. Um, my cursor here in the upper left will show you the uh, lightly penciled in uh, pen tip, that's a speedball nib. And then if you follow through each letter, you can see uh, the indications for uh, the angle of the pen when you're trying to make these letters. Um, like practicing a musical instrument, this takes many hours. Uh, my brother once told me that some neighbors were surprised that he had a sister. So I was in my room all the time drawing. Uh, this is a uh, drawing that I made in high school. I'm just gonna show you some of the work that I was making before I studied calligraphy. Um, this is a yucca seed pod. It uh, was, uh, the, the problem was to expand it into an abstract uh, design. I was interested in Mayan Indian culture. This, is, uh, this piece is about uh, two and a half feet by two and a half feet circle. It's ink and gouache on paper. Uh, I was also interested in Southwest Indian culture, and this is a uh, gouache painting of a sand painting um, that I saw. So uh, the next work of art is a self-portrait of 18-year-old me before I met, this is the person who met Father Kaddish in 1975. And uh, at that time, uh, personally, I wasn't averse to men in black with uh, white collars because my family uh, regularly attended an Anglican, uh, Anglo-Catholic church in Denver. Uh, so, you know, priests uh, were kind of part of my environment. Uh, Father Kaddish was about my height. Uh, he smiled a lot. He smiled easily. He moved quickly. But man, that red pen of his, when it came out on your work, on your practice sheet, it was painful. Uh, he had a high, reedy voice um, and uh, I got to say a great sense of humor. So at Colorado College, there was a program where you studied one subject for three and a half weeks and then took a four day break. So for uh, classes like studio art, calligraphy, anything like that, uh, you were immersed in it for that three and a half weeks. So Father Kaddish had us sit down at our desk at 8.30 in the morning with sheets of paper uh, and a bottle of ink and uh, speedball pens. And uh, we would uh, be, we would learn technique from 8.30 to 12. We'd have lunch and be back around 1.30 to 4.30 for practice. And I'd say about 50% of the people in the class uh, came back for afternoon practice. So um, the second year I studied with him, um, I was his studio assistant and we would share lunch together and split one can of baked beans basically every day. That's what he ate. So uh, the, the uh, Father Kaddish was a Chicago uh, Union sign writer and he went to Rome in 1935. He saw the inscription at the base of the Trajan column and he said, I know how that, those letters were written. They were written by a sign writer. And he um, made several rubbings of this. He was not the first one to do that. And interestingly enough, rubbings of the inscription at the, at the base of the Trajan col column transmitted that information uh, worldwide to several locations, I believe to London and then one uh, to to California, United States. Um, I'm not an expert in this, but it's just sort of interesting that that's how this information kind of uh, made its way around the world uh, so that other people could um, look at it and learn how to make these letter forms. Um, the, the Origin of the Seraph is Father Kaddish's most well-known book. Um, you can see on the front here, the uh, brush made, uh, stem of the letter R and the addition of the serif on the left side. Um, he, Father Kaddish is known uh, for this idea of the addition of the serif. There's a lot of discussion around that. 
Um, we're not gonna go into it now, but there will be a book I'll point out to you uh, with all of that information. So inside the origin of the serif, there are pages that indicate the basic brush strokes that go into making the Roman letter forms. And uh, this uh, plate uh, from a collection of uh, other instruction uh, uh, books is, uh, sh shows the stroke sequences and the directions of the, to make the Roman capital uh, alphabet uh, with a pen. Uh, so um, that's what I basically specialized in and uh, return, I return to this uh, sheet all the time. Uh, Father Kaddish also had his own hand style. He called it cat writing. Um, so these are freely written brush, brush, uh, brush uh, shapes. And uh, I actually still have a practice sheet from 1975 on the Denver Post, pages of the Denver Post, which uh, Father Kaddish always had us uh, practice on newspaper because uh, there were these lines that you could follow. It was, um, and it was cheap and you could do it a lot. And believe me, to get any good at this, you have to do hundreds of practice sheets. So uh, our final project in Father Kaddish's calligraphy class was to copy and calligraphy all of our class notes. So uh, we did this and uh, mine is about 50 pages. I'm just going to flip through the definitions section. You can see uh, this is all hand done by me and it's in a, a, in a calligraphic hand that Father Kaddish invented and it's called Petrarch. So uh, this is a, uh, a, print, a print script that's uh, at a slight angle and can be quickly written. Uh, but it replaced, in his mind, it was, it was supposed to replace Palmer Spencerian, which is the handwriting that uh, most American children were taught uh, as children. That's why everybody has, you know, different handwriting and mostly bad. So, <laughs> um, so these are the, these are the, all the definitions, different words that, that uh, we've come across in the field of, of traditional calligraphy. Um, and so that is the end of that project, or that is the project at the end of that class. Now, anyone who's interested in reading further about the classical Roman capital uh, really should check this book out. It has everything you want to, want to know. And if you enjoy counting the number of angels on the head of a pin, uh, this is the book for you. Um, one of the most interesting essays in it is about the geometry of Ro uh, Roman capitals, which cannot be analyzed uh, with a compass and a and a ruler, they are they have their own internal geometry, and it is it is pretty well explained in this book. It's worth it if you're interested. And the next book, uh, right around the same time, this book has to do with one of the uh, 1970s graffiti writers. His name is Don Juan. This is the uh, writer that I saw in New York at the time. Um, this book is uh, full of it, it is full of pictures that he took of his own work with a 35 millimeter camera in the 1970s. He went to the School of Art and Design in New York and um, studied photography. And then on his in his free time, he he uh, wrote in this uh, hand style all over the city of New York. And you can see and you look closely that um, the wide pen that he, he used, the wide marker, uh, writes with thick and thin, that's called shaded writing. Uh, so uh, you could make a case that this is the first Roman caps hand style because they're always uh, capital letters. 
So I'm just gonna throw that out there for now. And uh, if you're interested in graffiti hand style, this is the book to get. Okay, from 79 to 89, uh, I lived in Middle Middletown, Connecticut. I taught calligraphy as a volunteer at Long Lane School Juvenile Detention Center. Taught calligraphy three nights a week at Middlesex Community College campuses. Copied in calligraphy a children's history of Middletown. I studied calligraphy with Arthur Baker, 1930 to, uh, you know, here's, here's, here's something that uh, really sticks with me. Arthur Baker uh, did so much work and teaching and calligraphy. I, I had to dig to find his birth and death dates. So, so he doesn't have a Wikipedia page. Um, his uh, archive is at the um, letter form archive in uh, San Francisco. Uh, but even on their site, there is no, that I could find, there is no birth and death dates for Arthur Baker, where he came from, stuff like that. So that's a little bit of a bee in my bonnet. I, I really believe in preserving uh, artists' uh, life stories, uh, certainly their birth and death dates, um, you know, at least, at the very least. So I'm just throwing that out there too. Um, Arthur Baker, I studied with in New Haven and at the New York Society of Scribes. This is in uh, 79 and 80. Uh, I was a graphic designer at West Wesleyan University from 1983 to 87. And from there, I uh, went to, uh, to Merritt and Steinauer Press and became an account executive uh, from 87 to 89, working with Steve Steinauer, who's in the house here today. Hi, Steve. Um, managing the production of art and photography books. And uh, that was a, a real steep learning curve for me, uh, but a great environment. I uh, worked with um, living, work of living and uh, dead photographers and artists. And it was uh, really cut my teeth on print production and color management there. Uh, that's where I met John Copeland's, uh, worked on a, his first, self-published photography books, and he got me the uh, job at the Museum of Modern Art in the um, publications department where I went in 1989. So let's go back here. Okay, so this is Arthur Baker. These are two of Arthur Baker's many books. Um, and he, uh, one of the, well, let's back up to Father Kaddish. One of the rules that Father Cash has was, was if you were working with a hard tool, such as a pen, uh, rather than a soft tool like a brush, uh, pens, when writing calligraphy, had to be held at a consistent angle. And um, so a cant of 30, 45 degrees or, or whatever the chosen cant might be. I don't know if you saw that in the def definitions, but there was a definite can't angle that Father Kaddish recommended for hard tools. Well, Arthur Baker took these hard tools. These, these are brass pens, by the way. They're made uh, handmade by Philip Bousma, who's a um, uh, typographer, uh, font designer probably too. Um, can't hardly find anything about him on the internet, but um, Arthur Baker, uh, Twist, he, he, he manipulated, he, he, his practice was called pen manipulation. So um, instead of adding the serif uh, on the capital letters here, um, that serif is uh, generated by a twist of the pen at the end of the uh, stroke there. So um, that's a, the, the, the two calligraphers, Father Kaddish and Arthur Baker were quite divergent in the way that they made Roman caps. Uh, I remember hearing Father Kaddish uh, referring to, to uh, pen twisters, and I believe he meant Arthur Baker. So, um, but studying with Arthur Baker was a wonderful thing. He was a very gentle man. He was very quiet, but boy, he wrote many, many important books. I think the last book he wrote was on paper airplanes. That kind of tells you what sort of who he, he was. Um, this is what his calligraphy looked at. It looked like, sorry, in the 70s. Um, so I call this Baker hand style. 
uh, you know, no one else was doing this. Uh, pretty much people were um, adhering to model letter forms, which is what how traditional calligraphy was taught. Um, a few more pages here. This to my eye was really exciting at the time, just about as exciting as uh, Don One. So um, here's a Roman alphabet uh, in the pen manipulation technique of Arthur Baker that I did. Um, it probably, I probably did this in the early 90s. It took a long time to uh, master that technique, but um, I did. And so that's what it looks like. And then I began to make art pieces. This is 1984. So I was working at Mer Merritt and Steinauer Press at that time. And um, Also 84, 83, 84 was when the movie Wild Style came out. I don't know if you know about that. It was about uh, hip hop culture. Um, and so I was aware of that. And uh, here's another ba uh, Arthur Baker inspired piece with a, with a uh, traditional Roman, uh, Roman capitals alphabet um, underneath a uh, Arthur Baker uh, type alphabet, which again, took me uh, several years to master this technique. But you can see the Roman capitals are already uh, are, are overlaying each other. They're, they're sort of, uh, you know, not meant to be, um, you know, perfect letters separate and, you know, kind of traditional. So, all right. Uh, this is uh, 1984, this book came out on uh, subway art and I started to make, uh, to riff on that with calligraphic marks. Um, so this is a, a large piece for me. This is probably about, um, I don't know, 28 by 36 or something like that, it's pretty big. And, um, we have powdered pigment. Oh, oh each of these uh, horizontal bands is supposed to be the side of a train. That's kind of, you know, my thinking there. And uh, so we've got powdered pigment, we've got oil paint stick, we have some uh, a brush with a black ink. And uh, so this is a multimedia um, painting. And Pamela Smith, 1985 have another one of these. Uh, also 1985, again, these are, you know, to kind of uh, call out the uh, wild style on the sides of subway trains. And uh, use of calligraphy to, or pretty, pretty traditional calligraphy to, um, you know, to create these uh, pieces. Okay, so 1989 to 95, moved to New York from Middletown, Connecticut in 89 to work as production associate in the publications department of the Museum of Modern Art. Uh, again, John Copeland's got me that job. Um, I lived in Greenpoint from 1989 to 2018. Um, and that period was total immersion in New York graffiti environment, which inspired me to push Roman capitals into a hand style, but using traditional calligraphy writing tools, the brass pens and India ink. So you're gonna see in these next pieces, uh, how uh, I sort of went about that. So we have a um, more traditional, this is again, Arthur Baker, uh, pen manipulation method of uh, doing Roman capitals, and then these um, much looser kind of written in water first. I started to write in water uh, because uh, uh, that put me more in touch with the kinesthetic, uh, the muscle memory of letters. So I wasn't watching what I was doing. I was a lot less self-conscious. And then I'd go back in and uh, sort of retouch them and the watered areas would fill in, you know, in a very uh, unpredictable way, sort of like that. 
Uh, here's another uh, attempt to kind of dissolve and break down Roman capitals. I did kind of a, uh, I, I cut out a piece of sponge. These are kind of small, actually. They're like eight and a half by 11. So they look a lot larger on the screen than they are. But um, I cut a piece of sponge in a square, maybe two inches by two inches. I dipped it in water, tapped it on, on the paper, and then wrote uh, a letter over top. And uh, the, uh, you know, shape of the letter would would dissolve. And um, so I was doing a lot of experimenting with uh, that kind of thing rather than making perfect letters, which I had done for years. So I tried to close to perfect. <laughs> um, okay, so these are graffiti tags in uh, ABC. I'll point that out to you here. Here's an A, here's a B and a C, and these are all ABCs in ink uh, with a Philip Bowser brass pen on paper. They're small. Uh, uh, this is again, eight and a half by 11. And we'll run through a few of these. Here's uh, graffiti tags with the uh, sponge print. Uh, again, sort of a combination of a random shape and the regular letter or the you know, hand style letter form. A, B, C. Then um, I took a trip to uh, Gettysburg to the battleground. I don't know if anybody's ever been there, but if you haven't, I highly recommend it. Um, and this, uh, uh, the story of the battle, uh, I had to express somehow. So uh, when I got back, and uh, so these are actually ABCs that have become figures in an active battle scene. Um, now we're back to um, tags, street tags uh, that I've made a little bit more complex than uh, you see, tend to see them on the street. Uh, using different uh, pen wits and uh, areas of ink and water and uh, just seeing what will happen. So they move around a lot until they dry and then you get what you get. Uh, okay, so these are Roman caps. This is, this is sort of a, a beginning Roman caps hand style. I did this with a uh, ink and a pen and just quickly wrote without watching what I was doing. So again, just based on kinesthetic uh, me movement memory, memory of movement. Uh, so then I thought, well, let's see if I can uh, cut those in stone. So I got myself a piece of slate. Um, I drew these uh, hand style A's on this piece of slate. I carved them. Um, by the way, I must mention that in Rhode Island, we have uh, the um, John Stevens shop in Newport where three generations of stone carvers uh, with the last name Benson uh, work. Uh, Nick Benson is now owner of the shop and um, I am not worthy to tie the sandals at his feet, but here, here is my uh, attempts at stone cutting. This is, this is 1993. Um, this is a, another uh, partial hand style uh, letter forms carved in slate uh, with gold leaf. Uh, I gave this to my niece Elizabeth uh, when she was born in 1993 as a gift, my gift to her. Um, this is uh, Roman, this is another carving, this is just uh, Roman capital essential strokes you know, gives a feeling of an alphabet. It is an alphabet, uh, which I carved and then painted in with uh, gray paint, circa 93, 95. And this is a freestyle on, uh, alphabet that I traced onto stone. And uh, this stone is 12 by 12. It's got a split face. You can see it's not smooth. So you can see the, um, you know, surface of the slate. Uh, and I rough cut that. Uh, out in uh, Father Kaddish technique. Uh, okay, so now we're back to some more 
uh, water-based, ink-based uh, alphabets. Again, writing with water first, then tracing over with ink. Uh, these are alphabets that were uh, not done exactly the same way, but they are meant to uh, uh, express it's a similar kind of energy as graffiti writing. Um, and so there are two examples of that. There are three, four examples. The example on the right is uh, a sort of an accumulation exercise of uh, alphabets. And um, so uh, again, when you see graffiti on the street, it's often cumulative. You'll see alphabets you'll, or tags overlaying other tags. You rarely see an alphabet, but alphabets are my thing. Uh, and and so, so the idea of accumulation and kind of what that does to letter forms is interesting also. Um, 1995, we're at 1995 to 2004. This period was less about letters and more about an investigation of mark making and the idea of il senio di Guido, uh, Guido Strazza. So the definition of il senio, the sign slash mark. Remember this goes back to the futurists um, uh, artists. Uh, the translation of the definition is just as the gesture is a declaration of war the sign slash mark is a compromise of peace and complicity between matter and the artist. So at this period, I was really letting go of uh, legible letter forms. I really wanted to uh, explore the gesture, the sign, the mark, and uh, see where that started to go. So I studied Italio printmaking with Guido Strazza several summers from 96 to 99 in Italy at CEAM, Conservatorio Europeo di Arti e Mestieri, Mercatello sul Mataro in the Marche region. In 97, I took two trips to Tokyo for photography book press approvals, uh, spending a month each time. Um, and then let's see, in 2001, I became global director of catalog production at Phillips DePuri and Company. And uh, last but not least, met Willoughby Sharp in 2003. So here's what the work in that period looked like. Uh, you will not see letter forms as, we, as we've seen them in the past. Okay, so Guido Strazza, this is a work of his. Um, this is another work. Uh, in my co collection, this is an etching uh, with several uh, etching processes, um, making that print or preparing that plate, making that print. Um, this is another one, again, uh, writing directly on the plate. And by the way, in the printmaking process, uh, there's always the surprise that what you write on a plate comes out backwards in the print. So that's really trippy. And um, if you're writing letter forms, you have to write back for it to write read once it's print, printed. So that's a good reason to give up writing letter forms, the printmaking workflow. Uh, these are early exercises in Strata's class, just accumulation of marks, you know, no letters, just seeing what kind of comes out when you you know, make an abstract mark. This is one of the prints I made. Uh, here's another one, another accumulation of marks. And this is quite interesting because uh, in that, uh, the way Strata teaches, there's no perfect print. There's no, no perfect uh, way to, uh, yeah, to make a print. So, or to make a plate or a print. So this, this plate at the top, you'll see, kind of has these weird wh white areas. That's where um, we were told to take one end of the plate and literally hold it in the acid for much longer than the rest of the plate and almost wave it up and down, you know, to get the acid to eat uh, the metal so that no ink uh, could get in there. And that's where you get a white space in the, or white 
whitish place there in the black area. That should all be black in terms of the way, uh, based on the way I mean that I had uh, done the rest of this, uh, these marks. Okay, so Tokyo 1997, two months total immersion in an illegible text environment. I don't know if anybody's ever been to an Asian country and looked around and not seen any uh, Roman letters, but it, it's an experience. And in the 90s, there was literally no uh, Roman lettering anywhere. So I, I was given a sign with uh, Japanese on it, which said, take me to my hotel at XYZ, you know, um, <laughs> uh, the address and then other things that I could point to, meaning, you know, things that I might need or want to do. Because um, very few people spoke English. Uh, they made draw I made drawings in Tokyo in my hotel room that became imagery in the next printmaking class with uh, Stratza. So we're going to run through couple of those. These are, these are small. These are about uh, six by eight or so. By the way, I love working in hotel rooms. I don't know if anybody's ever had a chance to do that, but it's almost like uh, COVID lockdown, you know, there's no communication. You're just there with your art. And uh, in this case, looking out the window at, you know, Japanese, calligraphy and signage in downtown Tokyo is really great. Uh, yeah, so this is just black ink, very thick black ink with a hard, you know, uh, sort of a bamboo tool. And then these were these funny markers that I got in um, Tokyo that there was an eraser one. So you could go back through and erase kind of uh, some of the, you can see it here the eraser marker, going back through and taking out some of the marks that I'd already put in, I kind of like that. Uh, okay, and so now we're going to the etchings that I made uh, using that similar imagery. And there are those three. So I made these in Italy. So from 2004 to 2014, um, not a lot of my own artwork got done. This period was devoted to gathering, and preserving life stories and activities of underknown artists. So beginning in 2004 as a collaborator, archivist and oral historian for Willoughby Sharp, whom I met in 2003, as I mentioned, the publisher and co-founder with Liza Baer of Avalanche Magazine. I co-curated several exhibitions about Willoughby Sharp during that time. In 2006, I conducted a 24-hour oral history with Willoughby Sharp in Berlin on a DAAD residence and placed Willoughby Sharp's archive at the Getty Research Institute in 2016. In 2010, I produced uh, with Duff Schweniger a 30-minute video documentary of the FSAC about artists' use of pre-internet electronic communications technologies by the Franklin Street Art Center at 112 Franklin Street in Tribeca, active from 1975 to 77. And this uh, I felt was important because uh, pre-internet electronic communications technology was being, for was being forgotten at that time. I mean, I had to have explained to me at least 10 times how it worked. And so I thought, you know, in another five years, no one's really going to understand how this uh, it was a bicoastal satellite communication between two groups of artists. Uh, how this happened, or how this worked. So we preserved that as an oral history. On uh, 2011, I organized uh, the exhibition Tom Hannon Paintings and Jazz Album Covers in Brattleboro, Vermont, and uh, moved from Brooklyn to Bristol in April 2018. It started my Instagram page in October. So back to Instagram. Instagram is, it has been integral to what comes up closely. Roman Caps hand style 2019 to present. All right, back to square one. We got the uh, 
Stroke sequences and directions for Roman caps here. That's always the load star, lodestone, whatever the word is. And uh, so I start there. And, but this time, instead of the brass pens, we go for the graffiti markers. We've got a 60 millimeter wide one here. We've got a 30 millimeter wide one here, and 15 millimeters, and then a five millimeter bullet point. So these are the instruments that the writing instruments that I use now for Roman caps hand style. And they're all available at Blick Providence. So if you feel the urge, you can find them there. This here, this is the first using a 15 millimeter um, acrylic paint marker that I just showed you. Uh, this is the first uh, fully achieved uh, Roman caps hand style alphabet. So uh, that was shown at Imago Gallery. Oh, uh oh. Phew. <laughs> in 2019, I think it was. Uh, yes. And let's. No, sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Sorry. Okay. Here's some other ones, different colors. You can see you have to do uh, 10, 20, 30 of these to get anything going and sort of consistent. But, but this was the earliest Roman Caps hand style that I, or the, the first one that I uh, achieved. Uh, here's another one. Uh, this is um, a compression, a vertical compression of all 26 letters. If you start here, follow my, cursor goes up, there's an A, there's a B, you can sort of see or feel them, there's a D, and then the E, the horizontals are, are indicated with just a little, a little tick mark. So um, I enjoy finding uh, exercises like that to, uh, I don't know, break my brain and my hand. Uh, so these are, uh, also alphabets, you got to trust me here. I'm not going to, if I start tracing all of them, we'll uh, be here a while. Uh, this is another cumulative piece. Um, I can tell from the angst in this that it started out with something I really didn't like. And so I kind of like tried to uh, erase it or cover it up and then just layered several al alphabets on top of it. Again, this is the uh, graffiti wall aesthetic. These are different. This is more getting into the uh, uh, looser, airier alphabet and uh, layering again. Um, so what I like is starting to happen here is a sense of uh, weaving of uh, calligraphic marks and uh, Here's a, sim, uh, a piece of uh, layered alphabets on black paper. And uh, the use of a black marker within these layers kind of uh, makes it really feel uh, woven together. So I feel like this is one of my most successful pieces. Um, it's entitled Bitches Brew. It was made on the 50th anniversary of Miles Davis, uh, recording of Miles Davis album by the same name. And here's another similar piece that's began with a blue Roman caps hand style underneath. And we have some marker freestyle uh, in yellow over top, and then a black uh, alphabet um, overlaying that, which kind of comes with uh, in this spooky uh, weird thing, but I like it. Uh, okay, so this is, this is a, a thing you can do with a 60 millimeter uh, wide marker. Um, the height of the letter is the same as the um, width of the writing tool. And in conventional or traditional calligraphy, usually the width of the writing tool is about, you know, one eighth or at most, a, 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 you know, you're pushing it at a half the height of the letter form. So, 
Uh, these are a real, like I'm really uh, put, putting myself to the test to make something that even looks like Roman capitals um, in this format. I'm sure if there are other writers out there, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, but again, you come up with these experimental forms. Uh, these are more um, layered alphabets on hand style alphabets on black paper. Uh, this white marker uh, was being really cranky that day. It was exuding all this water. I don't know why the paint wasn't mixing or something like that, but I kind of went with it and, and uh, I like that. And from there, I also discovered that writing with uh, nearly dried out markers so it was also uh, kind of interesting. Um, this is another uh, test case with uh, um, compression and layering of and free freestyle uh, alphabets. Um, it looked like here there was a water alphabet underneath this one. So again, sort of mixing these techniques is can be affected. Okay, so here here's where I really really. Uh, in my process, this this show this these are two states. On the left, you got a previous state to the final uh, or close to the final, yeah, version, which is on the right. And um, I started out with this sort of gentle, nice, uh, thin, beautiful, you know, uh, hand style letters in the bottom, and then I covered it with something else, and then I started to color them in. And then I thought it needed some color. So I did this pink alphabet on top. And then I was like, oh my God, that's, that's just not going anywhere. So I put another alphabet, which you can see kind of here. Uh, and these are really frustrated interventions. I'm like really feeling it. I almost tossed the thing out. And then I thought, eh, let's get a, a yellow marker here. And just you know, try to outline some of these things. So that's what I did. And um, I went to sleep. Got up the next morning, and I sort of like this is a real graffiti piece here. Is everybody with me? Okay. We are with you. Oh, good. Okay. We're moving along here. This is another um, another angst-ridden piece. Um, you know, layers of things you can see underneath that I thought were going somewhere and then I overlaid something on top. Yes. Um, and these have fluorescent gel marker in the background sort of poured in. Uh, so, and here, uh, this is another kind of style that I came up with on the left. We have um, some very thin uh, Copic markers, and which I ha held two at a time in my hand, uh, or two, what, one, a marker and a pencil. And I just did an accumulation piece with several alf alphabets, and this is what you know that looks like. Uh, and then when you start coloring these in, um, these forms colored in are called calligraphorms. And with Sam Shakat, if you are here in the house, uh, with Sam Shakat is a, a calligrapher from Dubai who taught at the New York Society of Scribes in October of 2019. I took his course in calligraphorms. Uh, so this is a uh, shout out to him. And this is what that, what that kind of work can look like and check out his page. He's really, really something, Arabic calligraphy. Okay, so now we are up to uh, the latest um, series, Roman Caps Derangement. And in, this is a COVID-19 hand style. And uh, I first heard the word derangement um, in reference to uh, what doctors saw happening to human blood once the COVID uh, 19 virus had kind of invaded the body. So he, and they called it hemostatic derangement. What that meant is that the integrity of the blood had, had been compromised by the virus in such a way that it couldn't do its job in the body. So the blood was, was forever 
compromised by this virus. And so um, that kind of hit home with me, plus the larger sense that our lives were deranged by the pandemic, uh, just the lockdown and the fear of getting the disease and the attempts to stay away from it. Uh, so I'm glad we're all here because um, it was a pretty scary time. So this is a little bit of a dark series. Uh, there's not a lot of color. Uh, you're not going to see, I'm not even going to try to uh, show you where the letter forms are, but hopefully you can kind of feel them. And um, there's another one. And that's the, that's the one that I think was used in the publicity. And to me, this is kind of the scariest one. It also has uh, these um, chalk marks. They're, the color is called sanguine, which means blood. Uh, these are a Taylor graph uh, 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 markers. They're, they're, it's chalk, basically, but it's like waxy chalk. And so I layered uh, letter forms uh, in with that to this piece. So we're getting to the end of the talk. I would like to mention uh, before we close um, again, how uh, great Instagram has been. The algorithm has introduced me to so many uh, wonderful artists and uh, two that I wanna call out right now. Um, I feel a real affinity with uh, my own work. And plus I uh, am really behind uh, the efforts on, uh, beh on behalf of both of these artists that the people in their families are making uh, or in their, in their circle are making to preserve their work. Uh, they're both um, dead artists, not with us anymore. Uh, and there are people actively working to uh, bring the work of these two artists out. So um, I wanna you know, call, call that effort out because I think it's really important because I never would have seen this piece by Luigi Pericle done in 1963. Um, he is such an interesting artist in so many ways. Um, I feel like I'm looking back now to go forward with my own work this is gonna deepen. I can feel like it's gonna deepen what I'm doing right now to uh, get to know this work more. And so, uh, and here is another one of his pieces. This is a uh, figure, uh, figurative piece out of, out of uh, calligraphic marks. And um, so uh, this one is fully realized with a background in three dimensions, plus just a lot of written you know, a feel of writing and graffiti in it. And I love it. Um, and the last um, artist is uh, Judith Lindblom, who, who is a, uh, was a uh, abstract expressionist in New York City. Uh, she knew Sonny Rollins uh, quite well and did uh, works based on his music. Uh, um, this is a piece that's in my collection. It was done in 1957, a year after I was born. Uh, and Judith Lindblom is an artist whose work I think uh, I like to see more of. So I have to thank James Lindblom for uh, putting her on Instagram because um, it's another uh, joyful algorithmic meeting. And uh, thank you for that, James. Um, so we're at the end here. Uh, keep on writing, folks. That's what I plan to do. Uh, I think Roman Cap's hand style uh, for me is on a roll. And uh, the best part about it is I believe that what I've done is to uh, put Roman capitals and graffiti hand style on the same footing. So uh, no one is uh, more dominant than the other. Uh, they are both uh, worthy. Uh, practices and uh, I continue to I will continue to uh, go forward uh, seeing where they the combination 
of them go. So thank you very much. And That's wonderful, Pamela. Thank you. How lovely. And what a lifelong pursuit, um, you know, having just such a great focus that has brought you through so many winding paths. Um, we do have a few questions. Okay. Um, if you're ready. Um, yes. I do have one first. And uh, sure. did you ever have the opportunity to actually go out and do some public graffiti? I had plenty of opportunity. I did not do that. I did not do that. No. Okay. Yeah, but, I, but I would like to at some point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I could see myself doing that in the future. Sure. That's great. Yeah. Um, we have uh, some question, a question here from in the chat. Uh, thanks for the wonderful presentation. I have a question for Pamela. Uh, calligraphy means beautiful writing. Whereas the graffiti was seen in the streets often criticized and subvert the classic notion of beauty. I think the combination of calligraphy and graffiti is very interesting, a very interesting aspect of your art. I'd like to ask what sort of short circuit between the classic and the street, what does it mean, what it means for you? Well, that, that, that's a great question. And I think uh, that meaning has evolved since I started doing this. I kind of started it with, um, you know, just a simplistic idea of why aren't these two worlds speaking to each other and uh, ended up with, uh, you know, this wonderful sense that they're both on the same as uh, kind of potentially aesthetic plane. Uh, yeah, that's it. They're both, none's but one is not better than the other. And so the word calligraphy, um, you know, now that, that we're all kind of uh, ha have more of an awareness of what privilege means and things like that, uh, you know, I'd like to say it's in the eye of the beholder. So um, certainly there are a lot of arguments to make about, um, you know, uh letter letters uh adhering to certain rules things like that uh you meeting certain kinds of demands legibility and stuff like that so uh i've kind of let that go and i admit it and i'm opening myself up to whatever the you know result is but uh yeah so i'd say calligraphy is a, is a uh, you know it's, that's a moving target it's a moving target of really interesting, very interesting work by combining aesthetics that culturally want to oppose each other, but maybe they really aren't in such opposition as they originally think they are. Right. Um, that that is uh, very uh, interesting. I can hardly wait to see and hear what uh, what comes of that. Thank you. Um, also, you mentioned one of your pieces created in response to visiting the Gettysburg uh, battlefields. Um, yeah. um, I find that really interesting. Most people only think of painters uh, or fine artists uh, like painters and sculptors responding to, especially painters responding to emotional uh experiences that they have um and of course your approach to calligraphy is fine art and in many ways can be viewed as painting at this point um do you often use life experiences to inspire or express those feelings within the uh the roman capital paintings that you're doing uh, well, that, that is one instance and you, that's a good question because you just made me think of the other instance, which is Roman Cap's derangement, which is, was a hugely emotional, uh, kind of response, uh, via calligraphy, uh, to me at the time. And, you know, I still feel that way. Uh, yeah, so that, that's interesting. You, you sort of put those two worlds together. Uh, I only showed one, uh, Gettysburg piece because I didn't want to, you know, go into, I wanted to save some time, uh, but that was an important series 
for me. Um, so thanks for, you know, making me put the, as I say, the two together. Yeah, these Roman, yeah, Roman caps arrangement. Well, yes. look forward to seeing more like that then. Thank Another you. question from the chat. Um, Linda McGaughlin asks, it's amazing to me how figurative the letter forms are. Pamela, Pamela can you talk a little about this connection if you see it? I totally do. I totally do, especially in the Gettysburg piece, because those uh, were ABCs that, that in my mind and feeling became, became figurative. Uh, so uh, what, is, what is drawing the figure uh, for me that, that has to do, uh, I've never really been inspired to draw the figure per se, but uh, I think that uh, the, cal the calligraphic uh, mark making, um, it comes out of the body. So it's in, in that sense, it's figurative. And if it reads figurative, that's wonderful. Uh, but I, I definitely get that. I mean, I, I know what you're seeing in my work. I'm not feeling very articulated about it right now, but um, definitely get that. Great. Thank you. And Elizabeth asks, how does your approach change deepening on the medium you use, stone, paper, et cetera, or how does the medium influence your work? Ah, that's a really good one. This is especially uh, the stone, putting the stone and um, hand style together really felt like a stretch, you know, because look at, look at the inscription at the base of the Trajan uh, column. I mean, that was an important dominant message to the world about that war. And, you know, that was an you know, really important, you know, thing that was meant to last forever. And it, so far it has 2000 years intact, uh, which in itself, by the way, think about our letter forms haven't really changed that much. So, uh, so to answer your question, to put uh, graffiti hand style, carve it into slate um, was a real sense of dissonance for me, but I did it anyway. Uh, and <laughs> So thanks for that question, because <laughs> I like remembering uh, my own points. Like I say, my own little little spaces of ignorance, you know, and things where I overcome myself. That's all. Part that's one of the things I enjoy the most. That's the true artist spirit inside you. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. Well, Pamela, this has uh, been great this afternoon having you as part of our artist speak. Um, we're so proud that um, you were part of the series and we invite everybody to be on the outlook for Artist Speaks in the future. Yeah. And um, any, uh, any, I don't see any other questions coming through. So um, I hope everybody has a great afternoon or evening, depending on where you are on the globe. And um, thank you from Imago for coming. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Thank you, Mary. Thank and you. Thank you